Yo, it's your boy Logos, and today let's react to Thomas Sowell talk about why some intellectuals never grow up. I feel like this is very relevant nowadays, especially with cancel culture, woke culture, and all the other nonsense we saw in the past 10 years or so. Who knows how long that shit gonna go on, but I feel like the repercussions is something we're gonna continue to see because the people in college now and people who just recently graduated college, they are now the people who are your teachers for your children. They're the ones that are going to be taking civil jobs or government jobs. And hopefully not. That ideology will probably seep in through that work. But I'm willing to bet that it will. Because a lot of these intellectuals are low-key socialists or Marxists. And I'm not a fan of Marxism. No matter the way you slice it or how you try to interpret it or twist it to make it seem like your version or your ideology is unique and different from Stalin's, Pol Pot, or any other authoritarian dictators who use communism or marxism as some type of shadow behind their real beliefs but let's get into it before i be here ranting all freaking day to a small child the reason he cannot do many things that he would like to do is that his parents won't let him Many years later, maturity brings an understanding that there are underlying reasons for doing or not doing many things, and that his parents were essentially conduits for those reasons. The truly dangerous period in life is the time when the child has learned the limits of his parents' control and how to circumvent their control, but has not yet understood or accepted the underlying reasons for doing and not doing things. I feel like that age is very much around like the teenage years as they get like 13 and older because like he said, your brain is starting to develop more, your body is starting to develop more and that brings in different scenarios that you're not used to yet and your parents may talk to you about certain things but of course, of course you're young and curious, so you're going to try stuff out, you're going to sneak out and do some things and push your limits and that's completely understandable but it's up to your parents and it's up to authority figures that care about you and the people that are around you that care about you, even if they're not family, to try to help you out, give you mentorship, and rein you in. When I used to be an after-school counselor, I would talk to the kids about their behavior and the repercussions of their behavior. I wouldn't just tell them not to do something because it's bad. I would tell them not to do it because there is consequences to what you do. And it goes beyond me putting you in time out or talking to your parent. When you get older or you go in high school, you might get your ass whooped for this. And you might get permanently fucked up for this. So control this behavior now when somebody like me cares about you and want to help you out. Don't listen to your stupid friends who want to just laugh at you when you do something stupid. This adolescent period is one that some people, intellectuals especially, never outgrow. The widespread and fervent use of the word liberation in a wide variety of contexts is one of the signs of the adolescent belief that only arbitrary rules and conventions stand in the way of doing whatever we want to do. That is very true. That's probably why you have a rise of anarchists today. Well, people who claim they're anarchists, but they most of the time they've never been hit, never been in a fight before, they've never been in a confrontation. They don't know how we have something crazy go down. They usually break down, but they're usually the same ones screaming and yelling and getting in people's faces for a disagreement, and it's ridiculous. I feel like our generation, and by our generation, I mean like 20 to like 30 something, because I'm 26. Our generation been pretty fucked up by this mindset, in my opinion. You see in colleges, shoot, look at this picture right here on screen. Like a lot of this stuff is from the past few years. Excuse me. A lot of this stuff from the past few years, and people still doing this stuff. <laughs> look, it's mostly white people holding a Black Lives Matter sign. It's funny that I see this picture because I just read a part in the book. By Thomas Sowell called Black Rednecks and White Liberals, how white liberals give all this excuses for negative black behavior. And they try to say that these people who do these negative behaviors is part of culture and identity. I don't understand how red out of red lot children and crime and all this other stuff is part of our black identity. It's not. That's not something we should embrace. It's not originated to us to begin with. But I'll do the whole book and quotes in a separate video. According to this vision of the world, the problems of all sorts of individuals and groups, women, minorities, homosexuals, children, 
are to be solved by liberating them from the restraints of laws, rules, conventions, and standards. They are to be liberated even from the threat of adverse judgments by other individuals. We are all to be non-judgmental. Single father. Two centuries ago, the like great multiple, British... Le like multiple baby mamas, multiple baby daddies, that type of stuff they try to normalize in the black community nowadays. Talking about you can't talk about um, single mothers. Like, it's just nonsense, in my opinion. Legal scholar William Blackstone pointed out that there are some laws so old that no one remembers why they existed or what purpose they served then or now. But the bad consequences of repealing some of these laws have often made painfully clear what purpose they served. Some of the painful consequences of various liberations that began in the 1960s have included the disintegration of families, skyrocketing crime rates, falling mm -hmm. test scores in school, and record-breaking rates of teenage suicide. A long downward trend in teenage pregnancy and venereal diseases sharply reversed during the 1960s, starting a new trend of escalating teenage pregnancy and venereal diseases, climaxed later by the AIDS epidemic. Sometimes bad things happen because of adverse circumstances, poverty or war, for example. But our post-1960s social disasters occurred during a long period of peace and unprecedented prosperity. Mm -hmm. Murder rates, for example, were much lower during the Great Depression of the 1930s and during World War II than they became after various liberating changes in the 1960s. One of the signs of maturity is the ability to learn from experience. Some of us have learned, and we have halted or reversed some of the adverse trends. For example, the quest for those elusive root causes of crime, so dear to the political left, has been put aside in favor of locking up more criminals, and the crime rate has declined. The left is upset that we have so many people behind bars, and lament how much it is costing to keep them there. They do not even bother to estimate how much it would cost to turn them loose. The I was just about to say that, like, there is a good argument about how much it costs to have all these people in prison, but what would the effects be if these people are let free? You know when COVID happened, and they let prisoners out of like jail and prison because they had COVID, or I think they said the um, size limits were getting too much with COVID involved. That shit was crazy. I don't understand why you would just release criminals just because of COVID. You already have people locked up inside and then you're gonna release people who didn't do the right things before all this stuff happened. I don't expect anything positive to happen because of that. And I don't understand this liberal mindset of always trying to take accountability from the person who did something wrong. You see that in the black community all the time. I made a video about gang culture and gangster rap. I want to say free gangsters and free rappers who did fucked up evil shit because they made music you like. That's so damn ignorant to me. People are dying. People are losing their futures and lives. Children, adults, they don't care who they kill. And you want to make excuses for them and say you should free them? We should free them? Because what? They made a rap song that you like, and the rap song probably talked about killing gangs and violence and drugs and fucking random women too. Like, it's ridiculous what we put up with, or the stuff we allow to happen, and make excuses for, and say it's part of our culture. For me personally, none of that stuff is part of our culture. That shit is embarrassing. The left has never understood why property rights are a big deal, except to fat cats who own a lot of property. Through legislation and judicial rulings, property rights have been eroded with rent control laws, expansive concepts of eminent domain, and all sorts of environmental restrictions. Some of the biggest losers have been people of very modest incomes, and some of the biggest winners have been fat cats who are able to use political muscle and activist judges to violate other people's property rights. Politicians in cities around the country violate property rights regularly by seizing homes in working-class neighborhoods and demolishing whole sectors of the city in order to turn the land over to people who will build shopping malls, gambling casinos, and other things that will pay more taxes than the homeowners are paying. That's the only reason I never understood burning down your own community when you have like a protest or like a riot like we've seen over the past 10 years. It never made sense to me. You already have a problem with poverty in the community, but you want to burn down the businesses that do exist? 
that often are sometimes minority owned come on now that, that makes no sense what do you expect to happen people still have to go back and live there after you get done burning this shit down and your emotions calm down it's ridiculous that's why property rights were put in the constitution in the first place to keep politicians from doing things like that but the adolescent intellectuals of our time have promoted the notion that property rights are just arbitrary rules to protect the rich. Definitely sound like some communist type thinking, if you ask me. Many academics and federal judges are sufficiently insulated from reality by tenure that they never have to grow up. And that's a damn shame. That's why people who care about this type of content like me and the people who watch this stuff with me or even on other platforms or through other people. That's why we need to make this knowledge more known because people don't care, but people will care once they start affecting their actual lives. And that's the issue. By the time it starts affecting your actual life, it'll take even more time to fix it or remedy it or take away that law that caused it to happen in the first place. Shoot, look at welfare. All we did a couple of videos about welfare and the effect of that in the black community, and we still haven't changed from that. That's an example of how a, of how a law or policy change or a program being enacted can have a negative effect, but it's so harder to change it after already messed up. It's already in place. Now you have to have people admit that they messed up for something to change in the first place. And like in the video I did a day ago, politicians don't want to admit when they mess up because that takes away votes and it takes away their chance of having a long career. It's ridiculous. It's a cycle that we need to stop. And it starts with the individuals that's a part of it to do something. It's all about accountability, in my opinion. It's your boy Logos, and I'll talk to you next time.